Hey guys, what's up? Alec Torelli here from Conscious Poker and excited today to share with you the much requested how to beat recreational players, otherwise known as bad players, fish, VIPs, whatever you want to call them. I feel like the first thing you need to do when it comes to how to beat bad players is you need to identify the players at the table that you want to target. And these are the players that you want to look to play pots with. So in the last video where I talked about how to beat tag players, how to beat tight aggressive players, how to beat good players, you want to avoid those players. You want to avoid games that they're playing in and you want to avoid them when you're in the pot with them. And when it comes to recreational players, you want to do the opposite. You want to target them. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get yourself in favorable position with these players. So you want to get the pot heads up. You want to play in position and you want to have a strong hand. You want to play the pot heads up with them. You want to play the pot in position against them. And you want to have a stronger range than that. You want to have a stronger hand than their range. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, first thing you want to do is you want to isolate these types of players. So the way to isolate them is raise big when they limp. You don't want to raise small because you're going to get a bunch of callers. You might get three bet. The limper might call you uh, too often. So you want to isolate them with a big raise with strong hands when they limp. And when the bad player raises, you want to three bet. You want to re-raise them when you're in position with a strong playable hand. Now what this does is it forces the other players behind you out of the pot and you keep the pot heads up with your target player. You play the pot heads up, isolating only that player who's probably going to call you, probably going to pay you off, probably going to make a mistake against you uh, later on in the hand. I talk about this strategy a lot more in a course called Preflop Mastery, which is just one of the many courses inside the Conscious Poker membership, our flagship product. You get direct access to me, our community, lifetime access to the product. Uh, it's at ConsciousPoker.com and you can click on membership to learn more. So really confident that's going to help you take your game to the next level. A lot more about how to beat these types of players. That's the first strategy you want to do. You want to identify the player and you want to target them in the hand. You want to isolate them out. And the second thing you want to do, which is kind of what I led this video with, is you want to avoid these blanket labels, right? So labeling someone a fish, a VIP, a bad player, is quite limiting. And there are a lot of reasons why. There are a lot of weaknesses. There are a lot of leaks one can have such that you would label them a fish, a bad player, a wreck, a VIP, okay? So it doesn't help you to label them. I mean, it helps you from a macro standpoint, like a big picture concept. Hey, this is a bad player. I wanna play the pot with him, okay? But once you go beyond that superficiality, you gotta go deeper. Why is this player bad? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Are they bad because they limp call too often? Are they bad because they're very passive and they just pay off every bet and they never raise you? They just limp call, check call, check fold. There's, you've played against those types of players before. They just, they just kind of bleed small amounts every single pot. Or are they bad because they're hyper aggressive and they have a big ego and they wanna bluff every hand. So their aggression frequency is like a 10 but they're just piling in the chips too often. They never have a strong hand. They play too many hands and they just bluff off all their chips. Those are two polar opposite types of players. Both are very bad. Both are very exploitable. You want those players in your game. You want to play pots against them, but you want to play the pots against them dramatically different. If you're against an egomaniac calling station that's hyper aggressive, you're going to play a lot differently than if you're against a like passive limp call check full type of play. You're going to have diametrically different strategies against those types of players, albeit the fact that both are bad. So you want to understand why they're bad. The first step to doing this is, is consciously avoiding that superficial label because once you label someone in a certain way, the mind stops looking for new evidence and it starts looking for evidence to confirm its pre-existing belief. So you want to be careful about the way you label them and you want to always be updating your strategy in real time, keep your feet on the ground, realize that everyone does something well and you want to be mindful of their strengths while targeting their weaknesses. Okay, so typically, and this is, again, I talked about this in the last video about tag players, not every strategy applies to every player. There is no one size fits all. What makes poker unique is that the way people play is a reflection of who they are as a person. And so obviously everyone is unique. And so everyone has a somewhat unique playing style. Now, that being said, uh, in, in seeing, you know, playing a lot of poker, coaching a lot of clients, I've seen commonalities and I've seen patterns and there are general things that people do that are recreational. And there are general winning strategies you can use to adjust to exploit 
recreational players because typically they fall into this category, okay? But it's your job to understand whether or not these strategies apply and how to find the nuance, which is lost in our world today, in a black and white world we live in. One of the strategies we want to do is we want to value bet thinly. And the reason you want to value bet thinly is because typically recreational players call too often. They do not like to fold. They want to just see your cards. They don't hand read very well, so they don't understand when you're very likely to be value betting with top pair and you're not likely to be bluffing. They don't understand necessarily that they call too often and you're not going to bluff them and you're going to just exploit their weak range in this spot by value betting your top pair. So they'll pay you off with second pair. They'll pay you off with third pair. They'll justify calling because the draw missed, not thinking that you probably, you probably have a good hand. So you want to value bet wider and you want to do this also on earlier streets, not just the river. And that's because they call more often with draws. So they'll peel on the turn with a draw, whereas a better player will probably fold that hand. And you want to charge that draw maximally. Their decision doesn't change based on your bet size. So a lot of players will be conscious of the fact, hey, this guy bet full pot, therefore I'm going to be tighter and fold more often. Or this guy bet half pot, I'm getting better odds, I'm going to call. You know, a very recreational player is just thinking, hey, I have a draw, I want to see their next card. They're going to call regardless of your bet size. So you want to use that to your advantage. You want to size your bets bigger when you have stronger hands because you're just going to make more money in that spot, right? They're not changing their strategy based on your bet size, so why would you bet smaller? You also want to avoid typically bluffing because recreational players typically call too often. They're more call happy. They're calling stations. You don't want to expect them to make a big fold on the river. So for the same reasons you value bet thinner, you also bluff less. You want to raise limbs, like I said, and you also want to call versus their three bets. Now, this might seem counterintuitive. Why do you want to call versus their three bets? Well, two reasons. One reason is recreational players that play very straightforward poker typically only re-raise pre-flop. Now, this isn't everyone. Again, the egomaniac, hyper-aggressive person with something to prove might re-raise you when 9-4 suited. Typically, though, recreational players, especially tighter ones, only re-raise preflop when they have very premium hands. So they might only three bet you preflop with something like jacks plus ace king, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace king. So if you know they have a strong hand, you actually want to call more often because they're not going to fold their strong hand post flop, right? They're not going to fold queens post flop. They're not three betting you to fold queens post flop just because the board is favorable to your range. That's not what they're thinking. They're just thinking, I have an overpair. I'm putting all the money in and that's it. So you want to call when you get three bet against bad players. Because if you flop your hand, you will very likely bust them. You will likely bust them because number one, they have a very strong hand that they could put more money in post-flop with because they only three bet those hands pre. And number two, because they will not fold their strong hand post. So it's actually better to call to bust their aces uh, because you have a lot of implied odds, right? You could also easily get away from your hand post-flop because they're not three betting you with ace five suited and barreling off for three streets to balance their range. They're just not doing that. So you could just easily fold your hand, you know, you could fold top pair on the flop or definitely fold top pair on the turn if they keep barreling because they probably just have an overpair a disproportionate amount of the time, okay? The other thing you want to do is you want to avoid fancy play syndrome. I can't, syndrome, I can't tell you how many times I see even good players make bad plays against Rex because they're they're thinking too high, right? And I talked about this in my last video. I tell all my clients this. Your goal is to play on the highest level. It's to play one level higher than your opponents. And so, Good players, they kind of are their own worst enemy when they're playing against bad players because they're thinking up here, but the bad player is thinking down here. So the good player could easily go through these mental gymnastics thinking like, oh, I got to balance my range. I got to bet small to protect. And they end up outthinking themselves. They end up creating these complex strategies and solutions when the optimal solution is just very simple. Just bet big, bet with strong hands, don't bluff. You don't want to have fancy plays. You want to keep it very simple, right? If you're playing basketball and you're a great basketball player and you're playing against a nine-year-old, you're not going to shoot a fadeaway jump shot three-pointer. You're not going to do that. You're going to take the ball, you're going to drive to the basket, and you're going to lay it up, right? You're going to do it every time. And that's what you should do against bad players when you're playing poker. I hope this video helped you. If you like this, please share it with someone that you think would benefit. Also, I put out a lot of this content here on YouTube. This is probably shared on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Follow me at Alec Torelli or subscribe to the Punch Poker YouTube channel. Uh, like this video, that helps it go a long way or like this post on Twitter, whatever it is. I really appreciate you and your time. Check out ConsciousPoker.com for more. We have an awesome newsletter there as well. It's totally free. And I will see you guys in the next video.